Hey, you got a sneak peek of uh, one of our mindful minutes. <laughs> so we'll see the glaciers here in a few minutes. Hello, everybody. So super, super excited to be back with you again. Um, of course, I am Chance. And as always, excited to be returning as your designer um, as normal. So uh, really excited to have a few new people joining us today and uh, a few of our um, kind of launching group last week are actually on vacation and or uh, not able to get online because of thunderstorms and, and such um, in uh, the Middle East. So uh, we send our hearts with them. As long as they're not being eaten by the machine, I'm, I'm pretty good with them not being here. Yay, especially if they're on vacation. Uh, do not be here. You should not be here. So um, hooray, hooray. All right. So I am uh, really kind of thrilled to to just take a moment to to look back to last week. So last week we talked about our animal personalities, right? So for those of you that are new, there's three core elements, as you saw in the video, to this alter ego. And the animal personality is, is kind of first and foremost. You see mine here with the wolf. And um, it was really cool. We ended up in a space where we used our animal personalities to talk about how they can bring us value um, for just us, just ourselves, how they can create value for us. And that ended up creating a value strategy for the sea turtle, value strategy for the panda, for the wolf, for the squirrel, and, and so on. So uh, we actually will give you a link to the, the earth research that we place that in. I'll, I'll make sure to grab that. I don't think, Ella, it's in the, um, the run of show stuff. So I'll get it for us at some point here. Um, but that was very cool, very compelling, um, kind of an interesting outcome today we're going to pivot over to the elemental philosophy and talk about how nature's elements can help us create values for our stakeholders, that business, individuals, community, teams, industries, economics, government, all that kind of stuff. Uh, yes, I know it sounds weird, but it, it does it does happen. It can be done. So um, as we, uh, we kind of open up, I want to throw it over to Sam aka the curiosity to just say hey um, share some of his reflections as we move into week two of our our series here hi everyone uh great to see you all again from those who were here last time last week and good to see new faces uh, appreciate that chance yeah just to say a quick introduction from my end uh, i'm one of the co-founders here at wonder and the reason why we exist is we're, we're really passionate to try and create opportunities that inspire and, in and empower change makers to overcome their hurdles or unlock their unlimited potential towards whatever sort of impact they're trying to bring to the world and that's where chance and i have got to know each other over the years and i've really found the whole process of how chance and viridescent bring a very unique way of us having these conversations and, and realizing our own abilities. Um, it's a really special experience. I really have appreciated every single part of being on that journey. So looking forward to more, more of that today. Uh, but just to say, you know, from our side, as the values that we have as a community is that we really believe in everyone's unlimited potential to achieve whatever it is they're trying to address. And so our mission is to create those safe spaces with trusted peers to help us all develop skills or unlock our own you know, belief systems and abilities to create that, that change. And again, just really excited for the conversation again, Chance. Thank you everyone for allowing me to partake. And it's certainly on my journey as one of the founders. Um, I know all too well the roller coaster and the, the kind of furnace that occurs uh, when you're trying to create something. And so I, um, I empathize and I appreciate the human effort that's needed. And uh, I've always enjoyed these conversations to re-energize. So yeah, lovely to meet nice. you all. Thanks very much again for today. And human to maybe rewilding effort a little bit here with us in our world. So yay. Um, cool. All right. So let's uh, let's break the ice with a little Zoom chat exercise. So last week, uh, your call to action was to share a story about valuing yourself above all else, kind of from our session then to, to now. Um, and it's ideal over this past week, but you can share something that's coming up for you. I know Paul has a trip to, uh, to Greece coming up, I think, right? So that's amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, throw this in the Zoom chat. Share a story about valuing yourself above all else. You can see mine was this last weekend. I went solo camping uh, near Flathead Lake. This was amazing. <laughs> it was right before the tourist season comes in. And um, I needed it because I have been spending all week solo parenting my toddler and my one-year-old. And it's been a lot of fun. I needed to be ready for that. <laughs> but it was only really fun because I took a moment, took a few days before um, and they actually joined me on my last day here and had fun playing in the tent and throwing rocks in the water and such too. So it's cool. 
Um, all right, who's who's gonna break the ice in our Zoom chat here? And Preston, it's so good to see your face in our world again. And uh, Tyler, for the first time, Tyler and I actually just met yesterday. Um, he potentially is going to be our uh, our independent insurance agent for, for Viridescent, uh, which is pretty wild. Uh, we just kind of hit it off right away. So welcome, for Thank sure. You. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Preston, do you want to say hi? Anything to Hi. To yeah, that'll work. Yeah. <laughs> In my comfort zone to go to Greece. Nice. All right. Who else? What you got? Could you want us to type it in the chat? Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Chat. Yep. In the Zoom chat. I see MCK pondering. I see it. Is that squirrel thinking? Birthday. So Ooh. Oh, you're planning your own birthday? Yes. Good. Good for you. Nobody can plan your birthday like you can, honestly. It's nice when other people do it for us too, but something about oh, pickleball. <laughs> nice. I still have never played pickleball. It's like a crime. Um, I'm going to. My wife was a tennis player in high school and, and she's played a little bit and I think it would be fun for us. So stay tuned. All right. One or two more and then we'll we'll carry in here. What are you missing? Sam, 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 did you get one in there? Is that well, I a, want to be really authentic and not, I'm not bring anything up that's, that's a struggle. I was, was going to say, is that a, is that a bad sign? Uh, you don't have one? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> okay, well, uh, you can I'm continue to, to think. Yeah, think about Talk. it. See if you put a few more in. Um, and I'm going to bring back around our luminary friend. Meet Sales Fox. Uh, some of you met last week, and uh, some of you meeting for the first time. So Sales Fox is a, a luminary that is is helping us navigate um, what we call uh, microspheres, but one specifically, uh, value creation. And these are places that help us master our mind and emotions. And Sales Fox helps change makers value themselves and create value for others. Um, this is kind of a prosperous movement to do better for people and, of course, our planet. It's this ideology around growth gardening, not infinite growth. And I suppose to get a little more close to the machine language, mindful marketing, marketing but it's not bottom line bullshit. It just, it just isn't. It's not the way that we want to grow. It's not the way Wonder wants to grow. And it's why we're here with you today. It's why I'm glad some people aren't here and they're out on vacation. So uh, Sales Fox is very proud of us for, for celebrating ourselves a little bit, particularly Preston planning our own birthday party. I think that's awesome. Um, and uh, I want to actually want to jump back to the chat. Was uh, Tyler, were you able to get something in there? There it is. Ah, Mora. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kids. Yes. I was awake from midnight to 4 a.m. with my daughter last night as she transitions away from her bottle. and <laughs> It was rough. Oh, man. Ah. Oh. All right, so we're gonna gonna dig in now um, into our conversation. So as they move us forward past Sales Fox, so he's hanging out, she's hanging out, they're hanging out, whatever Sales Fox is. Breakout number one. So I love when we have these small intimate groups because we'll just do a full full group conversation and not uh, complicate the mess with breakouts because I think we can get pretty deep with our nice group of what are we seven today? Seven's a cool number. All right. Uh, the question is, is what is your elemental philosophy and why? So some of you have done this already. Um, I think uh, maybe Tyler might be the only one that hasn't touched this question. So I'm really intrigued uh, to, to hear kind of where it goes for him. Um, so this is a particular nature element, right? Flower, mountains, fire, space, any anything, any element of nature and why it is the one that you chose. And we'll get into the philosophical component as you continue on um, on your journey here. And certainly as we go to question number two with it today. Um, and you see here on the screen a few tips for just helping each other dive deeper. I'm happy to facilitate and guide a little bit, but I encourage you to just, let's just have a conversation. Um, nothing so formal. Um, I love to, to get out of the MC seat and have other people jump in and, and talk. So, um, all right. Who would like to break the ice with the elemental philosophy? maybe one of our seasoned veterans. I am actually sitting in my elemental <laughs> philosophy today. <I'm> yeah. sitting. <laughs> so my elemental philosophy is my garden, um, which you can all kind of see in the background, parts of it anyway, not all of it, but uh, parts of it. 
And the reason I chose this is because to me, my garden is really an ecosystem, ecosystem in and of itself. We're growing vegetables, we're growing flowers, we're growing trees, we have fruit trees, um, we have bees, we have squirrels, we have uh, uh, butterflies and birds, all kinds of pollinators. And it sort of represents, um, this garden has actually gone through a number of different iterations. Um, we actually just redid it all um, right before we went to India in January. We added this trellis, which is going to eventually have a climbing rose on it. Uh, we replanted a bunch of vegetables, which we have been foraging and eating out of the garden for the last month. Um, lots of great lettuce and kale and uh, broccoli and a bunch of other stuff. And we're getting ready to replant now for the summer. So it sort of represents the whole sort of cycle of life and death and rebirth and regeneration. Um, you know, and it for me, it just felt, you know, sort of less obvious than picking like mountains or rivers or water or something like that. It's like, you know, it felt like a whole sort of system to pick as an elemental philosophy. So, so yeah, so I'm, I'm sitting in my elemental philosophy today. <laughs> Any questions, thoughts? riffs off of what Paul said. Okay, and we can move to the next person, whoever would like to jump in next. I see Sam is unmuted. Yeah, just sitting there thinking I'm very jealous of Paul's situation. It's amazing, doesn't it? It looks beautiful. Um, yeah, from, from from my side, again, I think one of one of the things I'm enjoying about coming back into the Viraverse is trying to reconnect with all of this chance. We've had conversations about, mm -hmm. I've certainly been in the uh, the machine, shall we say. Um, but I, I will have to go with an, an obvious one, which is the, the mountains and particularly my reflections from when I used to ski quite a lot and just the, just the incredible... Uh, in awe of how powerful it is and yet yet seems so tranquil and peaceful and it just reminds me at least of the perspective of, of where we are and what we're doing and you can get so zoomed in to the day-to-day -day. um I always try and remember those those moments when getting off the ski lift and just looking out across this incredible vista of white and and beauty and just being on top of the world so for me it speaks a lot to just remembering what I'm part of which is this incredible planet and ecosystem. Um, but as I say, I'm really enjoying getting back into the vibe of this and, and hearing what everyone else is also talking about. I get a lot of energy from everyone in the room. Skiers in the room? Who, who we got? Hands up? Hands skiers, up. cool. Hands up, skiers. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but you're wow. in Utah, Tyler. You, you best be skiing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Snowboard, so really but jealous. I, my 10-year-old uh -huh. skis. Yeah, skiing, I see nice. that as just a synonymous thing. I used to live in Park City and would ski Deer Valley. And I had a friend who, because Deer Valley does not allow snowboarders. And I had a friend who's a big boarder. And every year at the end of the season, when they close, first place we would go, we'd hike in. And he would just like freedom it up and, and just uh, shred Deer Valley. It was, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> One of the regrets of my life was never learning how to ski. <laughs> I I'm a pretty good teacher if you're if you're interested in picking it up. <laughs> I've I've tried a few times. I'm just not yeah. very good at it. <laughs> it's it's oh, it's tough to learn as an adult, I would think. Yeah, I started okay. when I was like four. I can't even well, yeah. I used to work yeah. at a luxury hotel and I'd see people come in ski for the first time as like huge families. Ooh, what <laughs> a tough thing to do, right? Mm -hmm. Which this kind of speaks to um a little bit of valuing ourselves a little bit, like as um as kids and as like young youngins, whatever that means. Um, to do things that we we love and try stuff and have, you know, as parents, right, expose our kids to all these different things because it's harder to learn it when you're older. You can, but it's tough. It's really tough. Cool. All right, mountains. That's a good one. Um, okay, who'd like to go next? I'm curious if Preston remembers hers. Yeah. It was a cactus, I think. It was, yeah. That was a long time ago. I was I, that feels like another life. <laughs> okay. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Um, it feels true though. I live in Arizona in the desert, and I I'm trying to think back. I can remember I, I a little was, bit. A little bit. I yeah, think. I kind of do too. I I think it was um. 
they they have the big saguaros. They're like hundreds of years old. So when they die and there's nowhere else, like I'm not seeing any new saguaros. I'm sure someone's farming them, but um, the whole concept of like sustainability as a groundwork for everything else, it's like we can't really survive if the planet's not surviving. So so that was yeah. what stood out to me. The so, human centric. You remember that. Preston, you said something that's that it's, I've done this hundreds of times with people, right? These conversations and whatnot. And um, you said something about, and I was tied a little bit to your sustainability beacon too, which is next week, our third one. Um, but this idea of like critical mass, existential, big thing, like that for humans, yeah. this is everything, right? This is it right here. And we probably should really lean into that and do good stuff and find our, find our way for sure. Mature a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I was probably deep in like a grief period of life. For sure. Hey, the, the, the best come, so, things come out of grief. <laughs> or they yeah. can anyway. Yes. Yes and no. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, the best and but, the worst. Um, yeah. Interesting to think back on that and versus now. Still feels true. Cool. Okay, nice. Well, just so you know, we have something called the sub ego that's starting to develop. So you you can add things, you can tweak, you can change. Um, you can just evolve because humans should do that. Growth, right? All right. Um see where are we at uh ella tyler mck which one would like to go next tyler yeah yeah welcome here we go all right no pressure sorry no pressure yeah um i kind of uh well i'm from the pacific northwest we moved to southern utah um about 10 months ago i grew up in trees and lakes and a very green ecosystem um used to love that now i I still do. I mean, I always will, but I have loved looking out at the desert. Um, because like I said, we live in Southern Utah, uh, and I just find it so beautiful. It, it, it grips me every day. I just love looking out at the, the mountains and, and just knowing that, you know, in such dry and, and host, host or, um, hospitable, uh, ecosystems how there could be such beauty and it just makes my it kind of makes me think about life and and you know sometimes we're trapped in in those moments those deserts and and yet there's still beauty all around us we just kind of got to look for it and so I wasn't ready I wasn't ready for this but I uh, that's kind of a you know mountains uh I love what um Sam said about the mountains I, I look at them every day and it, it just they're they're powerful um yeah like like it's a line in one of my favorite red hot chili pepper songs uh a mountain never seems to have the need the need to speak it, it just sits there and, and yet it's so powerful um so it's it's probably like uh i don't know i i i'm kind of going off the cuff here but it's just the first things that came to my mind is 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 that mountains desert um i think i think they're very powerful what do you think? Group consensus? How do you do? Huh? Yeah, yeah let me know, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> so a uh, quick story about the desert. Uh, so I was hiking in Zion Canyon um, and went up kind of heading up towards like the West Rim. And there was this uh, this older guy and, and a younger like 20 something um, hiking down and uh, or hiking up. I was hiking down. They were hiking up. And the older guy goes to me, he's like, how much further is it to the top? And I, I was like, oh, well, actually, I didn't even go to the top. It's a ways to get to the top of the West Rim. And he's like, oh, he's like, I'm not going to make it. Am I? Well, I was like, I was like, well, I, I mean, maybe I don't know how you feel. And he's like, uh, um, I was like, well, you're about to get to a lookout that's pretty special that that'll be just fine. Um, and he's like, I got to say, there's something about this desert thing. He's like, I live on the East Coast and I have like arthritis and tons of chronic pains. And he's like, ever since I got to the desert, I don't feel any of it. He's like, I wouldn't be able to do this if it was in the same climate as where I live. I, he's like, I wouldn't even got half a mile down the trail. And he was like three, four miles up. And it's a steep climb going up Angel's Landing. Scouts look out. It's steep. Um, yeah, it was awesome. So go desert. There is something about the desert. Nice. All right. Uh, let's see. Ella, present squirrel. Hey, hey, which one's next?
Sorry, I'm losing my voice. So I put mine in the chat. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you for that, Ella. Okay. MCK, you're, you're up here. I'll give you a minute. Um, with Ella's fire, I like the fire element because it's passionate, warm, and represents vulnerability, too. Um, yeah, that describes you well, Ella. I always appreciate your your fire. And it's a gentle fire. It's like a nice fire. It's very it's like a sweet fire. Yeah, it's good. All right, President Squirrel, you're up. Uh, yeah, so for me, it's mushroom. And the thing that I love about the mushroom uh, is that it pops up anywhere and everywhere. Uh, often can look a little bit different depending on the situation. And yeah, it's there to help and be supportive. So I think, uh, yeah, those are the things that really speak to me about mushrooms. Nice. Very nice. Okay. So yeah, Paul, yeah, go ahead. No, Paul, just, yeah, more more of this uh, present I was just gonna, Paco tour vibe. Let's go. <laughs> no, no, no. I was just going to, to add on to uh, what MCK was saying. Um, you know, mushrooms are just so amazing. They're such connectors, you know, with all of life underneath the ground. And, you know, um, yeah, mushrooms are, are amazing. So kudos to mushrooms. <laughs> there are some that think we are descendants of mushrooms. If you ever watch Fantastic Fungi, they make a pretty compelling argument. It's fascinating. Totally fascinating. Yeah, um, yeah cool. <laughs> All right. Um, so I know, Preston, are you still at out at the half hour mark? Is that right? Okay. Yeah. So can Sorry. I can I break you into uh, the second question since you're, we're going to lose you and have you test it out for us a little bit? Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll do this with Preston and then we'll take a mindful minute or two as she departs. But um, let me uh, get to where'd my Canva go? Oh, no. There it is. OK, so the second question is, how can our elemental philosophy create value for stakeholders? And stakeholders is a machiney sort of word, right? So it can be just for loved ones, for community, um, you know, whatever, and a friend. Uh, but it also can be a very economic thing. So a few examples of this um, is, how does your element work within a thriving ecosystem? So um, thinking water, giving life to the whole, a flower providing food to pollinators, and that kind of stuff. Um, and how can you play the part of your element in a real life scenario? So uh, Preston, <laughs> no pressure as you you break the ice. This is the first time this question has ever been responded to in the history of the Veerverse. So, um, <laughs> and you have like what Breaking 60 history. seconds? You've got yeah, like a minute. All right. <laughs> so um, the cactus. Yeah, let's 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 see. The first thing that popped into my head was like the image of the barren desert, and then there's like a cactus, and. I feel like internal corporate sustainability is kind of the same thing. It can be like a little gruesome out there. And then the sustainability team is usually like pretty cool. <laughs> doing their best uh, amongst, I think of like a big corporate, like, I don't know, Amazon or something. And then mm -hmm. the sustainability team at Amazon could be working for this like corporation that is looked at as scary or bad, but then the people are doing the, the most <laughs> they're usually pretty cool and like the little flower in the middle of the desert <laughs> that was the first thing I thought about. so that's connecting to like being the hope or something within yeah. the that ecosystem hope. that can yeah. be not great <laughs> mm. and then how can you play the part um the other thing I thought about when you first thought said this was uh, I do consulting right now for corporate sustainability. And a lot of the times I like to start with uh, like there's a room full of people. They're all there for some reason and figuring out a way to connect with each of them about the subject. So like some people care about saving money and some people care about the future of their children and everyone cares for a reason and I think it doesn't really matter what the reason is so I don't really know why that connects to the cactus but it brought it was brought to mind maybe resiliency um and that is your yeah. alter ego all right the resiliency, so that's cool um 
So this actually, I think, is really compelling because it speaks to the need to have people in this room and these spaces and these conversations that don't know sustainability, haven't done this before. And yeah. there's no better, harder place to get people that have that don't do sustainability to come into than the Viraverse in some ways. Um, but specifically because leadership needs to see these people because they work so hard, they're so passionate. And maybe yeah. they're not even sustainability team yet, right? But they're that like passionate change maker that could become the sustainability like lead even chief sustainability officer someday you never know right and, and all that stuff so mm -hmm. that's that's compelling all right well i want to be respectful of your you're out so thank you for joining us so hopefully sorry. we'll see you next week Thanks. At, no nice no you're you. totally good what a way to leave <laughs> see ya all right so as i queue up my uh my mindful minute we're going to go hang out at my elemental philosophy which are glaciers and i just think they're uh, the history of the earth um but also the thermometer for a uh, their earth thermometer for a livable human climate. And I find that to just be like, <laughs> wow. And uh, so, so important. So uh, enjoy a minute and I'll see you in a, in a sec. Get up, stretch your legs, refill your drink, whatever you need. Some lo-fi vibes on a Thursday. Nice. All right. So let's uh let's jump back into our our question that Preston broke broke the, the ice, pun intended, I guess. I like a good pun. Uh and uh and talk about how our elemental philosophies can create value for others. Um right now, something that's just like ringing in my uh, my ears and my head, of course, is is Paul's uh gardening food. Um amazing, of course. So uh, maybe Paul, if you want to jump in and talk a little bit about this, I'd be curious your perspective. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> well, I mean, you know, I think there are a lot of things that the element works within, within a thriving ecosystem. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, you know, the fact that we have flowers, um, you know, that pollinators can use um, and help pollinate, you know, some of the good, some of the food and whatnot. Um, the fact that the garden feeds us as well um, is amazing. Um, we've just been really enjoying eating out of the garden quite a lot. Um, and I think I guess I think about it too, just in terms of, um, you know, I'll kind of jump to the second the second question here. So you'll love this chance. I just agreed to become the president of the Society for Sustainable Events. And so, you know, how's the, how does the garden fit into that? So the garden, you know, you have to you have to figure out how to grow how to grow your food, how to grow the garden. And this Society for Sustainable Events that I'm a part of, you know, is is kind of an old organization at this point. A lot of the people that are on the board are a little bit burnt out. Um, we need to grow it. We need to grow 
new people. We need to bring in new blood. Uh, we need to foster that and regenerate it. And so when I think about my garden, I kind of think about it from that standpoint as well, in terms of like, how can I step into this new leadership role in the same way that my garden is, you know, feeding me? Um, how can I feed back to uh, the people that are in this organization and give it vision, give it leadership um, and, you know, just try and help it to grow into a whole different kind of organization that is really leading the way in terms of sustainable events. So, so yeah, there's, lot, there's lots within the, uh, the, the ecosystem of the garden that is very useful here. Resident, you madman in your retirement. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I told them though, I, I would only commit for a year and it had to be with the caveat that somebody else has to do all the administrative stuff. Good I said, you. I'm happy to provide vision and leadership, but I do not, I am not a good organizational administration person. <laughs> so I want to touch on this for a second, actually, because nonprofits like this, um, committees, board-based things, they are machines in and of themselves and they're under-resourced and they tend to take advantage of people. Really. They get a lot of free labor out of people. And it's just, it's, it's because it's a do-gooding thing. It's trying to like <laughs> do anti-capitalism in a way also, but kind of does some things that are tough for individuals. And so, um, I, I excited that you'll be at the helm of one because I, I know, of course, you know, this, uh, we have EIC history. We know we know these things. Um, not to to put too much out there. Of course, um, I like that this group doesn't know what the what the hell we're talking about. That's great. Uh, but the nonprofit thing, I think you can relate. I saw MCK nodding a bit. MCK, do you have any experience in that world at all? Being like a super volunteer, or that kind of thing. Board members. I just know it's very easy to get excited about doing the good in the world, and sometimes it, yeah, they're. Is a different kind of compensation structure. And sometimes those things are good. And some things those are um, challenging because the work is never done, as opposed to in some other sort of corporate structures. It's very easy to say, oh, the work is done. We know the work is done. Whereas in the social impact space, it's the mission usually continues. Ah, so change making a bit of a burden in the machine, maybe not so bad, actually, huh? Imagine that. Oh, I don't know. Interesting. Cool. Okay. Um, let's see. Who'd like to go next? How can your elemental philosophy create value for your stakeholders? I think Sorry. I'll go. Yeah, I was going to say building, you're over there. Building off of what uh, the provocateur was saying, you know, earlier about mushrooms as well, you know, that underlying, you know, connectivity. I think when it comes to people's ability to communicate, that is the most important pathway for us to be able to be connected. So articulating the things that are important to us, uh, sharing our boundaries, um, you know, giving a chance where we can be better together and collaborate. So I think communication is also part of the underlying framework of what really connects us. Um, and of course, then things like questions, you know, the things that can pop up in all those interesting places in different shapes and forms. So. The, what I was sharing, I think about, you know, mushrooms, I think relates more to when I think about curiosity and questions. Mm. Nice. Any follow-ups, any questions for the question master over here? Uh, if I could just jump in to say, I, I really love that one. And uh, there's a there's a thought process that I've been exploring with a few other people in, in the community as well, which would love to get MCK's view on this, but the kind of concepts and philosophy is that if you can't see something or find a way forwards it's just because the question you're asking is usually the wrong one and so like especially with leadership it's mm -hmm. more about the questions you ask than the answers you can provide and I, I just find that whole area especially as I lean into this curiosity element for myself um, I am a certainly a, a student of this of this area but yeah, just interested where you're taking that kind of analogy and metaphor or, or actual organic system from the mushrooms and that, that kind of line of line of questioning. Have you found that to be a really powerful way of opening opportunity? Hmm. I do. Do you have a specific example that comes to mind, Sam, or a, maybe a place where you found challenge that yeah, I think, I think ended up by could... maybe switching the question or that you're still feeling like maybe the right question hasn't been asked? One of the, yeah, um, for me, 
I know that the uh, the progress of, of my business or whatever I'm trying to create in the world is limit is is as limited as I am really. And so the way I think um, is the biggest limitation to whatever we can achieve. And so yeah, where I'm mostly looking at this is like this leadership quality of mm -hmm. when, especially when working with a team, trying to give more trust, trying not to give my opinion, trying to maybe ask them what they would do what they think and trying to build their confidence mm -hmm. um, alongside with the pressures of what we need to achieve. You know, it's, it's probably in that area, mostly practically, but I am also really interested philosophically by it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think there's, there's this balance, right. And I think I've seen this. So this is something that I've noticed in my own business, right. It's when you have a vision for something, how much of that is your vision to put out there? And then mm -hmm. encourage people to like those who are excited about being a part of it, you know, to join in and figure out, you know, that vision, you know, gets to have life breathed into it, mm -hmm. you know, or with the opportunity mm -hmm. to expand, you know, versus like when you're asking the better question, you're looking for feedback. Is it, or, you know, are you boxing people in for this question mm -hmm. kind of like veiled as like a desire to be more collaborative or is it you've been able to sketch out how you want collaboration to work with under this larger vision. And then you're finding those places where, you know, that value that those questions can really truly yeah. unlock. The opportunity can unlock. Yeah. Cause That's I really think I, I've given, I gave away a bit of my power in terms of like the vision that I've had for something that I've wanted to create and only realized, let's say, you know, a month or two ago, that I had given that away where I was thinking I was asking people for their perspective. I was thinking I was asking, you know, I was being inclusive. I was doing all these things, but it, maybe I was asking mm. too many questions rather than being specific That's... about where the questions were meant to unlock something versus giving away a certain degree of that. Giving away that direction. It's a real art. It seems real practice, a real, something that you need to explore and get feedback loops on. It's interesting how you, how you've reflected on that and felt maybe you want to pull some of that back in. Mm -hmm. No, I just, yeah, I just loved where you went with the, uh, the mycelium and the questions, curiosity. Yeah. Well, thanks, Sam. And thanks for that. Thank question. you for sharing. Yeah. That's so interesting. I think it's a pretty important one for us to continually balance because it's also regularly changing one one other thing mm -hmm. that i'll share that was coming up to me in a conversation i'm, I'm in a house with a, a group of people and we're all co-working today and even this idea of thinking about container why why do we say why do we talk about spaces as containers as opposed to spaces as an environment because they are they are changing they're a little bit unpredictable they're not exact like we don't know exactly like what's going to happen just like we don't know exactly what's going to happen with nature nature has patterns but nature is not necessarily always predictable so yeah i was just yeah one inquiry that i have you know today was just about yeah what does it mean to have a container as opposed to just creating an environment mm. There's, so, there's something here that's that's really, um, I think, profound uh, at unlocking a level of thought that brings greater growth to an individual, but also those that they are then around or trying to bring on the journey. And uh, it can't be answered within 15 minutes, but I would love to explore this mm -hmm. further at some point. But yeah. thank you. Yeah, I love that as well, MCK. I think that's such a great question of looking at spaces as environments versus containers i think there's a lot that could be unpacked there and you know it'd be great to just even have a whole conversation just around that question mm. i'm, I'm to go really again. excited i'm like really <laughs> excited no I don't, i'm not quite sure what to say actually because yeah of course we have we have our finite time um, but luckily, uh, uh, the Viraverse is a bit infinite, um, and we're partnership together, I think, is a bit infinite here, at least for a little while. Um, so this is going to come back around. Um, I'm also a bit inspired by the the visual artistic side of this. So in the Wonder chat, the group chat, something's coming in here for this. Um, stay stay tuned, because uh, this is compelling. And we will we will kind of consider this a seed planted in the provocateur's garden a bit, and we'll we'll grow it again. Um, maybe we'll 
Yeah, maybe we'll actually work it into next week's session um, because we're going to go into the sustainability beacon. And that's uh, for Tyler, that is this kind of like internal motivator source of like wanting to make the world a better place. Um, and I, I think we could work it in there in a compelling way for sure, especially since it's so core and close to MCK, MCK's beacon specifically. So cool. Okay. Um, so difficult to travel across the bridge to someone else, but we're going to do it. Um, we're going to do it. So who would like to, uh, to jump in next? We've got Sam, Tyler, and of course, Ella uh, can go in the chat if she hasn't already to preserve that voice. Sam, yeah, do you want to? Yeah, sure. Um, I just, I've just been thinking about it and it's a bit rough and ready, I suppose, but I, but I think with the map, with mountains, one of the things that, um, I was always taken aback by with like microclimates and how important they actually are in shaping weather systems and and climate. And I think going off what MCK was just saying there around how the environment can be unpredictable, I think some of like the magic and majesty of mountains, well, that was some alliteration out of nowhere. Um, I think one of the most powerful things is how obviously like river systems come off the back of them, climate, weather, they're such a significant facet and feature of the planet. And yet like, how Tyler was mentioning, they they kind of sit there in this like grand positioning and, and state and probably completely oblivious to how critical they are. And that they've, they've emerged from they've emerged from like these tectonic systems underneath them as well. So I think being being a significant presence, presence inside of whatever system or community or team that you're trying to operate within to maybe again going back to the MCK and where where Paul was on about with like the garden, just being part of that, but in a way that's, you know, a powerful uh, component without trying to overstate your position and actually uh, try and influence those around you, um, even though you, you, you probably don't realize your own power. I think there's something there for me. There's a very complex web here for me about like lead, keeps coming back to leadership and, and how to bring the best out of everyone else around you whilst trying to stay strong um yeah probably haven't articulated that as well as i as i could have but i i think there's something really powerful with how that that yeah mountains metaphorically are pro probably where i'd like to be strong resilient uh, and influential but but not overarching or uh, crushing people or, or things around me so bridging to mine a little bit and and kind of spotlighting wonder on um, sam's platform uh, we are uh, hanging out in Wonderland, actually, um, at the moment. Um, so mine being glaciers, uh, has anybody ever seen a glacier or like been on a glacier or been near a glacier and seen it create its own weather? Yes. Freaking yeah. magical. There's it's amazing. Maybe more, right? I, once, I, once, I once camped across from one of the biggest glaciers in Glacier Bay. Oh, <laughs> wow. Glacier Bay is in Alaska. Alaska. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Just amazing. Oh, I just got the chills because, yeah, I've been fortunate to stand on a few myself. I haven't gone to camp. Up. Oh, man. Ah, OK, that's um, so we're, we're going to talk about that story at some point. I want to hear more about that. But <laughs> the reason that I raise this is because um, I think about this idea of a sustainable company uh, and kind of in the startup space, more most specifically, rather than ones that have just done status quo stuff and are now trying to adjust a bit. Um, is that there's a desire to build a business model that is um, kind of circular and regenerative for everybody involved, right? So it's not just, the, the point isn't just, oh, I just wanna go get money. I just wanna make money. It's the bottom line, I wanna get rich. But it's like, no, we wanna create prosperity for everybody that touches the, the ecosystem, kind of coming back to this idea of like an environment a bit. Um, and wonder is so much this, you know, you all are investing in um, other mentors and um, change makers and, impact uh, entrepreneurs and things like that. And the idea is to um, really truly figure out that triple bottom line thing um, and that the planet in some ways is the most important stakeholder of all of this. And being able to create our own weather, to create our own system, our own microclimate, our own ecosystem um, is really compelling to me. And also I think about, you know, Sam, your transparency last week of sharing that sometimes like confidence and self-belief can waver sometimes, right? Um, well, as your alter ego uh, continues to evolve and come to life, you're a freaking mountain, man. Like 
ah, <laughs> how much more powerful could you be? Um, so uh, really, really compelling to think about uh, this, this idea of a sustainable company, sustainable business, sustainable economy kind of thing. Um, and better put, I think, to regenerative, right? Give and take, give more back to the system, to mm. your customers than you take away from them, actually. Imagine that kind of economy. It's very compelling. Any any thoughts on this before we, we move on to, uh, I think Tyler will be our last one. No, I see a lot of nodding. So the, the thoughts are, are percolating, right? So maybe th this might come back and evolve into our conversation with uh, with the MCK um, prompt and the uh, the seed that's already in Paul's garden too. So, okay. So Tyler, I'm very excited to hear you speak to this because I actually want to really thank Tyler um, and and put him up on a, a pedestal a little bit um, because he may have <laughs> gotten me to be committed to uh, viridescence liability insurance through his company regardless of what the price is, and I shouldn't tell you these things, but um, because of his transparency, he was so like authentic and transparent talking about like the 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 struggle that is insurance and and the game that it is. And I just was so grateful. It was very like endearing and um, what, a, what a sales fox tactic, uh, right? Um, no, it was very well done and I was so grateful for it. So I'm excited to hear your perspective on this. Well, thank you. And thank you for those kind words. I, I try to be very transparent in everything I do um, as far as business goes, because, you know, I do insurance for a living. It's not fun to talk about, but I write insurance for companies and I just let them know that it's, it's like, like you said, it's a game. You got to walk a fine line. You're dealing with an evil to get something that you need to survive. It's, um, it, it's, it's, it's tough, but is, to the, to the mountain, um, being so powerful and, and especially being down here and seeing so many of them in Southern Utah, it, it, it makes me think bigger. Um, it constantly opens my mind to, to bigger and better opportunities and to think um, on a grander scale, even though I, I struggle with that in life. Um, but I, I, the mountains are always just a beautiful reminder to, to open my eyes and think on a, a larger scale whether it's the way i'm feeling what the way i'm looking at a situation um or on as far as business i i like to i like to constantly be growing um and just like glaciers like a you know if they're not melting they're growing so um yeah it's i hope i answered that correctly i I got to say, this has been incredible just to be a part of this today and to listen to all of you. Uh, it's been so soothing and I'm sitting in my office and I feel totally at ease right now. Um, so I, yeah, thanks to all of you. Uh, it's been, it's been special. This is, this is a mountain today. You know what I mean? This right here is a mountain. Are there it's flowers on eyes. your shirt? Are there flowers on your shirt? Is that what those are? What, flowers that? on your shirt, your shirt flowers. Oh yeah. I, I, uh, I there's flowers there's a few things there's blue blue flowers I it's funny because it's when awesome. you asked to talk about flowers I I uh I love uh the color blue uh, it's a very soothing it's been it's been proven to soothe people um so when you asked to find a flower I I I love uh the lotus the blue lotus uh, uh really blue anything I'm a blue guy yeah nice um Okay, well, so that's amazing that uh, you are giving us soothing. I think there's a regenerative thing happening here. Also, our kindred thing is freaking me out because I'm wearing flowers. Mine are very small. Yeah. Uh, but I have like bluey, purpley flowers on my shirt here. That's um, funny. It's actually my wedding shirt. Uh, you know, just no big deal. But um, my wife is gone, so I miss her. Apparently, that's happening. Yeah. Um, Maybe it's just because I need help with the kids. Uh, no, um, no, I think your answer was amazing. Um, and I, I want to sit with this for a second. And I'm just going to blow through a couple of last points on our agenda so we can talk about this for a second, because I want to hit on the insurance thing, because you, you know, you've been very like transparent and trusting with us. You know, you have like an internal struggle uh, with what you do. I think it captures so much a change maker's struggle of like, how do I like work for a company and affect change? Or, you know, how do I be an entrepreneur and prioritize the bottom line to make sure that I survive? 
it's been a struggle for me, certainly. Um, I know Sam can relate to that too. Um, let's talk about insurance at, at the root, at the nature of insurance. It's a good thing, right? It's, it's about resiliency and protection and safety and things. Um, and I think that any business, any new business that starts for the most part, maybe not now in this new age, maybe it's gotten a little bit, not this, but for certainly a lot of it, it's rooted in good intention, trying to bring something valuable to the world. Right. Um, but it's, it's our system a bit like makes it complicated. And as growth comes as infinite growthism and some of this stuff comes in, that's where the problems are. And with insurance, especially we talked about this yesterday, um, insurance companies canceling homeowner policies because of wildfire risk. Like, are you kidding me? Like we're living in a time of climate change, but they weren't ready. Just like our whole economy was not ready. And so they're having to course correct. And that really freaking sucks because it happened to us. We bought our new house and uh, the good though is we went local and that then carried me to seeking local for our business. And that's why Tyler is here, which is really cool actually. Mm -hmm. So I, I just wanted to say that. I don't know if anybody has any quick comments or responses to that. I know we're, we're winding down to our, the end of our time, but anything to touch on in this space? If, if I could just uh, uh, maybe a slight tangent from the more personal elements, but I was reading recently about the insurance industry and obviously being affected by, um, well, everything's affected by climate change, but it feels as though it's almost from the the, art, the research I was looking at, the, the kind of canary in the mine almost with how the industry is reacting to seriously trying to account for the cost of this issue and then um, would love to um, connect further Tyler if there's any way of understanding more about what you do and the background of that your your kind of industry and any any insights or thoughts you may or may or may not have but um I just wanted to say I was reading about it just a week ago and really interested in the economics of all of of all of what's going on there um so slight tangent, but also loved what Tyler said, and it's uh, been a pleasure to hear what you've what you've been talking about and sharing as well. Thank you. I mean, we can go down that rabbit hole for an hour. Um, at the end of the day, it's it's money. Uh, you know, they've all got insur every insure every big company has stakeholders, um, and if they're not making what they need to be making, uh, rates go up and coverage gets mm -hmm. canceled. It's like I said, like, mm. like what I do, I have to walk a fine line because I, I hate the industry, but I also love it because I, it's how I feed my kids and I get to connect with a lot of wonderful people. Um, mm -hmm. but it's, yeah, you know, they, like, like you said, they, they don't know how to combat all of these things that are happening all over the world. They just, mm. it's, it's tough. Yeah. It's a tough industry, yeah. but I'd love to go down that rabbit hole with you someday. It'd be really, yeah, yeah. Well, I think there's a lot of yep. lessons for for industry that aren't acting quickly enough. But yeah, yep. okay, exactly. I totally hear it. Nope, exactly. It's a whole of the world. So, Big combo there. Uh, <laughs> all right, two things. One, uh, Tyler talked to me about crystals yesterday, um, and I then I now I think about diamonds, and I think about Tyler as a diamond in the rough of the insurance industry. Change maker, boom! Yeah, here we go. Try to be. Yes, um, that is amazing. And then also, <laughs> we we've we've got the path forward. It's very clear. So MCK's mushrooms are going to recycle capitalism into a circular economy. It's easy. Boom, well, solved well. it. No big deal. Done. And and then we'll yeah. be fine. Yeah, we'll be good. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, as we, we wind down, uh, I do want to um, to just, of course, especially say thank you to Tyler as a, a newbie in our world. That's very awesome. And uh, more to come um, because uh, we're very excited about this relaunching of the Wonder and Viridescent Partnership and where we're headed. These conversations, this is easy stuff, starting point stuff. You know, the, the depth will come in workshops and diving deeper. And uh, that's where we'll grow that real garden um, for sure. So yay for that. Uh, Ella, thank you for being on the chat and taking awesome notes for us. We'll take those over to the, the Wonder group. Um, so uh, real quick, I want to... Uh, touch on our call to action for next week, if I can find it. Where to go? There it is. All right. <clears throat> so, what to take it to? Of course, what we talked about here uh, today. Share one win where you created value for others. 
Um, and for those that do, you'll earn what is called a Vera coin, um, which can be applied to something we're doing. Uh, I'll send more details, but we're right, right now running a uh, Harness Your Hero co-opetition. So for anybody that is participating in our Harness Your Hero program from now until the end of May as a celebration with Earth Day, you're in a competition with some pretty cool prizes and whatnot. So I'll put that in the chat. Uh, for those of you that already have done the Origins credential for Harness Your Hero, you can replay um, and, and go after the prizes. Um, and for those that are new, uh, certainly you can jump in and start. And we've got people and a leaderboard going as we speak. So um, just really excited to have you all with us today. We'll send more information about all these things um, and uh, some outcomes uh, will come as well. So um, look forward to seeing you all next week. This was uh, this was was better. It was better than the last one. And the last one was a good start, but this was something deeper. So we'll we'll kind of note these seeds and uh, together we'll we'll start to grow them together. That is the growth gardening that we're doing together. So thank you, MCK. I love your eyes closed and the whole vibe. Hopefully you're not falling asleep. I think you're just like pondering and sitting there zen. Um, you guys are awesome. Uh, also to make it awkward as we depart, look at all these white guys in the room. Yeah, go ahead, go white guys. Like, yeah. oh. and with <laughs> that, see ya. Thanks, guys. Bye, you guys. Thank you. See you later. Fun. Thanks, Ella. Take care.